All right, so I kind of finished this project. While that took a lot of time, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I was super proud of it. Um, I also realized that like all of that weight and everything almost made it. You know, part of me was wondering would I be able to use that every day as my work badge. When you say all that weight, what do you mean? Just by the time you have the masonite and all these double layers of leather, I was like, wow, that took that took some work, and I tried carrying it as a, my work bag with my laptop in it. And I was like, Pretty I don't want to just uh, hold this by the handle all the time. <laughs> I see. So then the, sort of my next idea of what to do with leather working kind of just went up on a high shelf for a little while. Okay. So past a few months, almost close to a year, but not quite, mm -hmm. we all hit the stay at home orders. And it was time to circle back because I already had collected some leather working tools. Mm -hmm. And I had actually bought a hide. I can't even tell you what type of leather it was but um, had bought this hide a while back um, and so I was like what can I do with what I've got here and so one I had to almost have a refresher of like yes. what are what were those skills that I learned and luckily I had bought some basic books um, on leather working so I pulled them out and I was shown this really simple project so this is um, one piece of leather and I basically had this chunk of 4x4 four four just sitting around in my at my house mm -hmm. and so do you want to show them yeah. sort of a close-up of what we're looking at here yeah so I basically cut it out by rotating this block of 4x4 four four material on all sides so I knew like oh I wanted it this tall mm -hmm. and so you can imagine that if this was laying flat I've basically cut out a square right here to help these this corner be able to fold up on it so right it looks like a giant plus sign yeah exactly yeah, yeah essentially a big, giant plus sign. So I got to practice um, making this corner right here into a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead and get close. Yeah, so that would be a 45 degree angle as well as this piece. And then to help it make a nice seam down here, you basically create a V groove along this line and all the way around. So. A V groove um, carving tool is a really common thing for a woodworker to have and then I would just actually just use my chisel to create that 45 and I just had a small scrap of wood left over from making this that I just let my chisel follow on the scrap of wood to help me know what a 45 degree look like on a piece of leather so it was really handy to just use what I had at my house and then I just did some simple saddle stitch you know this was one seam on each of them. So I took away all that work of sewing in a bottom that I had previously done. Um, and so this was a really good warm up project. And so then I started asking myself, well, what other types of vessels could I make? And also I wanted to, I hadn't made anything round yet. And so I was looking at what was at my house and a friend had given me this turn bowl. And you can see um, that it really has some really good texture on it. And so I wanted to go back to some of the techniques that I used on this huge project and do some um, wet molding. So I just simply cut off a scrap piece on my hide and took saran wrap and I stretched that, I had it on a uh, roll so similar to what you might buy if you're moving houses or things mm -hmm. like that. Packing roll. Yeah, and so I just stretched that and I just kept doing laps and laps. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so that's how you kept the whole mold in compression yeah. so when it set it would take the form of the master yeah mm -hmm. and i did have one additional tool though um that what i'm just you? now remembering is is that you can buy what's called a vacuum press to make um skateboards so mm -hmm. any hobbyist or somebody who hasn't ever made a skateboard it's basically like a thicker ziploc bag but it has a little valve in the top and mm -hmm. just like how you might inflate like some pool toys or whatnot it has a pump that goes the opposite direction so it's right. extracting it air and so um, I had one of those as just a, a thing that I'd, I had asked for one Christmas and actually and then never got around to making anything inside that vacuum bag. So then I was able to slide this whole thing into the um, vacuum bag and I just left it in there for like 20 minutes then took it out, let it air dry for a while and then I had learned that on this project where I wanted to make really hard um, wet molding um, so I really didn't want to lose this texture as it was drying that we kept going back to our original mold so like this is a really uh, what would be the right word 
um, extreme bend. Yeah. Like, well, it's a it's a three quarter bend. So when you're trying to force that vertex through the leather, it almost never wants to receive the form of the corner. Um, it's just it's always going to want to soften your corners, which is great for armor and doing you know things that fit your body. But when you're trying to make geometries like squares or rectangles, um, the leather is very non-compliant. So if you don't skive it thin or have a really hard form, yeah. um, you can lose that very quickly. So sort of an, not knowing all of that, but knowing that I went back and repressed multiple times throughout the drying process to kind of waken up that leather and remind it of the shape that I was aiming for. Right. I did the same process with a more gentle shape and it did help it you know, it kept kind of getting more and more floppy. And this wasn't special leather that's meant for making holsters or extreme shapes. So sure. I had to kind of convince the leather that this yeah. is the direction we were going in. Yeah. But I was able to um, at least retain the majority of the shape. And so I just did that process, you know, two or three times um, while it was drying. And then just learned some simple, um, this is the first time I sort of did a new stitch right here. So just to, you know, learning a little bit of a new technique. Yeah, you have a nice cross stitch yeah. there. I can see that I didn't do, I just started realizing that I'm starting to lose a thread, so I I wanted to end this where I wanted to versus going back enough, you know, to really get it to hold in, because I like the aesthetic of it, but obviously it's not nearly as, uh, like, doesn't have a knot at the end, like, Got usually it. saddle stitching when you go backwards, so I'll have to think of a way to improve that so I don't keep um, coming unstitched. So one, one thing that um, Kim mentioned earlier that I do want to touch on again is when you're designing leather, if you're going to do any sewing, figuring out a geometry that allows you to minimize the amount of stitching you have to do is going to do two things. One, it's going to save you a lot of time, and two, it's going to give you a lot more structure without doing a lot more work. So um, the nice part is you can make forms that are really simple and elegant that just have seam lines on the edges. But then when you start to get more playful with the designs, you can go around the perimeter and you get these aesthetic details you wouldn't think of until you're actually just trying it out and seeing how it works. Nice, yeah. And so that was sort of the completion of this project. I also, woodworkers, kind of a funny side note is, is that um, a really common theme right now is to add or leave in live edges. So that's where the outside of the tree is visible in your project. Mm -hmm. And it kind of allows it to feel like you're still connected to how a board was made or something made out of leather. Um, and so I intentionally left the defect in the leather mm -hmm. kind of a, you know, a head nod towards live edge. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the time when I'm doing my armor, I always tell the kids, you know, during during my work, we do CNC control systems, and you can get immaculate finishes, but they're robotic and they're cold. And so I think the aesthetic that is sort of this natural, organic concept of a human making something out of a natural material, there's going to be defects, but that's what makes it unique. And so it's good to accentuate those and sort of celebrate everything about the design and what you've learned. So yeah. I, I really like that bowl for that very reason. Yeah. And then I was tired of sewing, but I still wanted to make cool things. <laughs> so it was time to move into some rivets. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 And what, what did you like about riveting versus sewing? Um, it just got you, like I could do this project and so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and it made it all of a sudden that, like I could, wouldn't mind if some like, neighbor or friend just had a birthday i could actually give this away it wasn't like so precious that like i couldn't ever even use it hardly or i don't want any water on it or you know like it just amount it allowed it to be something that um i could you know appreciate somebody else and give it away that it wasn't so precious that like <laughs> i would guard it with my life you yeah. know <laughs> yeah so that so then what you have here are three very simple processes and I, I like it because this is you know a couple of different types of stitching and all these assemblies can be done in different ways using either rivets or sewing but they're small enough to wear I'm learning it's, techniques yeah it's not this it's not like two months of just sewing and all your free time yeah it's good practice yeah 